how educators use goals and criteria in learning impacts children's perceptions of themselves as capable learners and whether children take an active role in learning. A common misconception about goals and criteria is that these tools should be provided to students when students begin to experience the learning. You know, when we first started with success criteria and trying to figure out how that applies in kindergarten, um, we absolutely had times where we brought the kids all together and said, how do you know you're a writer? And they stared at us and nothing came out. And I thought, this doesn't work. I, I don't know what's going on, but it doesn't work. A more effective approach, supportive of a play and inquiry-based learning environment, is to bring goals and criteria to children's attention as they emerge in their learning experiences. I find by giving them the materials that you need to start it. That has to be the conscientious plan. That's what you have to be mindful about, those initial experiences that you offer them. Then you need to listen and you document what they do with it. That's going to tell you what they know. That's going to guide your next steps, what you're going to offer them. So we're starting to talk about patterning. We would put out materials. We would observe the children just playing with the materials and um, see how they're exploring. And then we would start to take pictures of things. If they started to build their own patterns, we would observe that, take a picture of it. So we put the materials out for them to explore. And then we name their learning. We listen to the words that they have, we have conversations about it, and they would label it. Then we would bring them all together as a group, and we would talk about the pictures. Well, what's the learning happening in this, this picture? Um, from there, we would connect those terms up to our, our learning boards, our learning panels. Check it out, how many have I got? Four. Four. How did you know that was four? Because, um, there, it, um, there's two in here and two in there. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So you're telling me that I can look at this and know that that's four, but you're telling me I can see that there's two here and two here and that that makes four? Do you know what we call that? Are you ready for this word? Adding. 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 When you can take numbers and groups and put them together, you can call that adding. Now, JJ said, could we add one more? How did you know that? It makes five. Did you hear that? If we had two and we had two more, we added one more to it, Joshua says we'd have five. Thane, could you tell me, how would you know there's five there? One, two, three, four, five. What did he just... In a play and inquiry-based learning environment, educators provoke children's thinking by, for example, the materials they provide and by building on children's interests. As children begin to construct meaning from their experiences, educators can notice and then name the learning to the child in conversation with them. Knowing the goals and criteria embedded in the program expectations is an important support for educators' ability to do this. You have to know what you're looking for. You need to know that curriculum probably better than I've ever known any other curriculum. You know we what you're looking for. Our thinking, and you know it when you pictures, see it, and you honor it when you see it. As educators continue to notice and name learning with children, children deepen their understanding of the knowledge and skills in the expectations. High five to you. You counted. So here's what I've heard I've heard Lyric read the numbers, I have heard Thane count the numbers. And what did you do with numbers? And what do we call that, two and two and one more? Adding. We add it. But it's almost like staging. So if I know that next week I want to start labeling patterning, this week I'm going to fill that room with patterning materials. Because if you put the materials out, some of the kids are going to use them to make a pattern. Because if you start with, here's the knowledge, there's nothing to base it on, then you're not, there's not enough depth, depth of understanding or background knowledge, but if you give them the opportunity, which is usually staging with the materials, or possibly a small group activity so that they've all had some experiences, but you can't start from scratch by just asking them. Basically, we capture on pictures what we want to see um, for the success criteria. I can make a pattern, I can extend a pattern, I can label a pattern, I can record a pattern. So once we capture them doing it, we would show the children the pictures 
and use their words. Oh, well, what's happening in this picture? So they can identify that they, they can make a pattern. And we would say, great, let's make a board with that. So we, we, we would identify the success criteria of make a pattern, label a pattern, record a pattern, extend a pattern. And then as they continue to do it, we would label their learning and then would say, oh, you just made a pattern. Where could we put that? And then what, what would you do next? Oh, I could record my pattern. Great. And then where would we put that? And then so they feel like they're a part of making that board. They own it. They go to it. They know where to find it in the room. And then we talk about them being a, a mathematician because they are pattern experts. Mm -hmm.